the name of this video is infinite line of current. Note that this problem is very similar to the infinite charge line which we consider when we study the electrostatic field. Therefore, we are going to solve it in a very similar fashion. In this case, though, since we want to find the magnetostatic field B everywhere in space, we are going to use only symmetry arguments and Ampere's law. So let us consider an infinite straight line in this fashion. This is our infinite straight line. It's characterized by a steady, that is a stationary or DC current with intensity I at DC current. We want to find the magnetostatic field B everywhere in space. Step number one, we want to find the, we want to define a coordinate system. We are going to use, as always, a cylindrical coordinate system where the line itself coincides with the z-axis of the system. Then for a minute, let us also consider a Cartesian coordinate system x and y. We are not going to use it, but it's just uh, to give some nice three-dimensionality to this problem. This would be our r of the cylindrical coordinate system and phi is defined in this fashion, as always. This is the origin of the system. Good. Eventually, in this problem, we are going to need to define a closed line which is linked with this current distribution, which will reside on the xy plane. So let us extend a little bit the xy plane in this fashion so we can more clearly identify the xy plane, which is normal to z, of course. So we're going to have, eventually, on this plane, a line of this type, oriented, as always, counterclockwise, which is the most common orientation. We are going to call this oriented line gamma over phi, because it follows the direction of phi over phi, if you want. This is a closed line, which is linked with the current distribution, because it crosses, the current distribution crosses the surface associated with this line only one point, which is O in this case. So it's linked, according to our definition of linkage. We will also need another uh, line, which we call gamma Z, parallel to the Z line. And so this will be an infinite line. This line oriented, for example, upward, it doesn't matter. We call it gamma Z. Why gamma phi is linked? Gamma Z is actually not linked with our line of charge, of current I, with the current R. You will see at the very end of this video how we are going to need these two lines. Actually, we will use these two lines for uh, to use Ampere's law. Okay. But before going there, we want to define the degrees of freedom. So how do we define the degrees of freedom? Well, as always, we want to use only symmetry arguments. So first of all, we assume zero knowledge whatsoever about the, uh, magnetostatic, the magnetostatic field B, which at any observation point capital P, so the observation point could be, for example, this point right here, is our point P, capital P, so I'm observing the magnetostatic field there. So B at P, of course, in this cylindrical coordinate system, we have, in general, three coordinates, which we don't know. There will be an r-coordinate, a radial, a tangential, var phi, and a z component. So what are the symmetries associated with this problem? Two of the symmetries are exactly the same as for the line of charge, which was an infinite line of charge. Okay. So let's catch all possible symmetries uh, down here. We can have a rotation. So rotational symmetry of any angle var phi about the z-axis. That is, we can have any 
rotation of any angle of this line. So obviously, if this is the line, I rotate it in this fashion around the axis z itself, nothing changes. The other, this is the same as for an infinite charge line. The other symmetry is the translation symmetry by any amount delta z up and down, upwards and downward. So this is our translation symmetry. And finally, the last and most complicated symmetry is another rotation symmetry. But in this case, it is quite different than the rotation symmetry we had about a point O prime in the case of a charge line. And why is that? Because now we have a specific direction associated with this line, which is given by the current I. So if I flip the uh, current distribution by 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise, I change the direction of I. I'm changing one property. The line is not the same. It's exactly the opposite if you want. So there is still some symmetry, but it's with an opposite sign if you want. And so if we choose a pivot O prime, about which we can perform a clockwise or counterclockwise minus plus pi that is rotation. So this rotation is minus plus pi about a point O prime. So in this specific case, if we consider, for example, an observation point here, capital P, and here, as a solid structure, we consider, for example, uh, let's say a component in this direction, a vector like this for B. When I perform a rotation about this point O prime, clearly I becomes opposite sign. And so instead of uh, this point P clearly becomes this point P prime, okay? In the previous example, which is that of the charge line, this vector was supposed to become simply this vector here. But now, since we are flipping the sign of i, we need to also flip the sign of this vector. So effectively, the translation, the, rota the rotation about the prime is actually this new vector at point p prime. So this rotation, more properly, it's an anti-rotation. So the three symmetries are rotation for each angle of phi around z, about z, the z axis, translation by any quantity delta z, or anti-rotation by minus plus pi about O prime. Why anti again? Because the sine of i changes. And so that's the only thing which changes. So the only thing that they can change about any other vector associated with this problem is the sine of this vector upon having this rotation. Now we want to use these symmetries in order to solve this problem. So we will need three sketches, one, two, and three. The first two sketches are um, concerning with the the, are concerned with the rotation and translation symmetries. The last one is the sanity check, where basically we do a consistency check and we use all symmetries all together to see what actually is left of this vector B. And so let us consider again here our line of current, like this. So let us assume that uh, here, for example, this one is our point. Uh, O, the same point is here, and so here we have a line gamma bar phi centered at this point O. And for example, let us consider this observation point capital P, same as there, and the one at the opposite direction here, and maybe another observation point somewhere here, for example. Similarly, let us consider a similar line here. Okay, this is the same line, this is the same point O, and again we have this line gamma bar phi, but in addition, in this case, 
we are also going to consider a line a gamma z, as we've done there, parallel to this line here, to the axis itself of the current. And this is our observation point, the same point as this point here, exactly the same. Okay, so now we know that we have these two symmetries. So let's consider, for example, the radial component of B, dr. This is our radial component. According to the rotation symmetry, this means that this radial component has to be exactly the same at each point on this line, this oriented line, gamma r phi. Which means, according to the symmetries, regardless of the uh, distance of this point capital T from the origin, which is any arbitrary small r, vr has to be the same at each circle which has gamma z, z that is, z, the z axis, as a central axis. Okay, and this, for example, now here, we can study the, uh, by means of the second symmetry, the radial component of B, again, VR, is the same. But this time, instead of considering a rotation for each angle of phi about Z, we consider translation up and down by delta Z. So if we translate this vector upward or downward by any delta Z, we need to obtain the same result. Okay? So the combination of these two symmetries tells us that if there is an R component of B, it has to be the same at each point on the lateral surface of any cylinder which has Z as central axis, as we have seen for the electrostatic field case. Similarly, if we consider a tangential component D bar phi, we obtain exactly the same result. It has to be the same everywhere on this line gamma R phi. Similarly here, it has to be the same by any translation upward or downward. And I'm only sketching it one more time there. And finally, if we consider a Z component, also this Z component has to be the same at each point on the lateral surface of any cylinder which has Z as an axis. Now that we put all these vectors, we can write down that this one was our point capital P, this one is our origin O, same here, and our point capital P, and these are all our components. So this is dr, this is b bar phi, and this one is b z, similarly here. Okay, so what can we do next? We need to use the anti rotation symmetry in order to verify whether this argument is correct everywhere in space or not, and for all components. And so, in order to do so, let's consider again, in a third and last sketch, our line Z with a canai. In this case, this is our origin O. And as always, I sketch my line gamma bar phi. Here, this is our observation point, capital P, is another form opposite of it compared to the origin. So now the first thing I want to do, I want to perform an anti-rotation symmetry about any point, O prime, by let's say a plus pi angle about this point O prime, and so I end up going exactly down here to sketch something parallel to that. Okay, so this point P becomes a point P prime, capital P prime. Okay, so now we are doing all these rotations and uh, um, symmetries considering the line of uh, current and the uh, points P, P prime, etc., and the vector components of B as a solid object. So if we begin, for example, with the radial component of B, so with BR, upon performing an anti rotation symmetry, this component should become, if it was just a rotation, as we've done for the electric field case, it should become just this component. But it should become just that. But we are doing an anti-rotation because we are changing the, same, the sign of the, car, the current 
So actually, we obtain this vector here. Okay, so this is the first step of this sanity check. So step one, anti-rotation by pi around of prime. The second step is a translation upward. So I'm going from here in step two all the way to this other point, which I will call capital P double prime. And so this vector, of course, has to become this vector here. And finally, I can still perform a rotation by any angle, let's say this angle here. In step three, I go back to the original point capital P. And now I obtain a vector which is exactly the opposite of the vector we began with. What is the only condition this is true? When this vector is zero, which means the R has to be equal to zero. Note that in the case of the electric field of a charge on a infinitely charged line, in that case, the R was the only one not to be different than zero. In this case, this is equal to zero. Let's check what happens with uh, the tangent component B bar phi. So considering now this uh, component B bar phi, if we were to perform a simple rotation by any angle, like in case one here, in step one, well then we would obtain exactly something in this direction. However, since we're performing an anti-rotation, we obtain something in the opposite direction, which, when translated upward, gives me this component, B bar phi. And finally, this is now the arrow. I rotate it according to step three and obtain exactly what I started with, which means B bar phi can exist, can be different than zero according to this energy check. Lastly, let's do as always the Z component. If I were to perform a near rotation, the Z component would become something pointing downward. But since we are performing an anti-rotation, it ends up pointing upward. And when we translate it up in step two, it points upward. And when I translate it back, I obtain something which still points upward. So it's also consistent, which means also BZ in principle can exist and can be different than zero. So, the main departures compared to the electrostatic case is that the R is now equal to zero, whereas in that case it was the only one to be different than zero. But both Vbar phi and Bz can actually exist. Now, we know that the magnetostatic field B has to be solenoidal, so very likely uh, B phi is the only one which exists. But actually, an infinite straight line could also somehow correspond to a solenoidal field. So, up at the, up until this point, with these symmetries, we cannot tell anything about U R pi and B Z. They can both exist, and they can both be both different than zero. We will need to use some Pell's law in a smart way in order to finally obtain the final result, which is only something with B bar pi. Okay. So to recap these symmetries, we use exactly the same symmetry, the first same two symmetries, and in the case as in the case of uh, an infinite charge line, but. The third symmetry, instead of being just a mirror rotation, is an anti-rotation. And I know that here people have lots of problems. And again, why is that? Because the current changes sign. So everything has to change sign, and that's why we need to flip one more time these vectors upon doing this rotation. By doing so, we end up having that only BR, according to all the symmetries, can be, uh, e, he is actually equal to zero. So now, let's use Ampere's law. Now, to solve the problem, to find the actual mathematical expression for B bar phi and maybe for BZ, we need to use Ampere's law. And so Ampere's law is a circulation law. So it tells us that the circulation along any closed line, for example, gamma bar phi, as in this example here, of B dot PDL, has to be equal to mu naught times the current I linked with that line. In this specific case, we are in a cylindrical coordinate system, so this integral actually becomes the line integral uh, from 0 to 2 pi in d var phi of uh, r b bar phi, which is directed as uh, u bar phi, dotted with u bar phi. Because clearly, all the other components 
dr is zero and bz is normal, so they cannot contribute. So the only contribution can be for b, from b bar phi. And this, of course, gives us a one. But also, we know that if b bar phi exists, it has to be the same at each point on the of any cylinder having z as an axis, which means in particular on this line gamma r phi, which means this is nothing but b bar phi is constant. So we take b bar phi times the length of the line. So we take 2 pi r for a generic r, b bar phi. And this has to be equal to the mu naught times the current link with this uh, line, which obviously is just i, as we can clearly see. i crosses right at this point, so obviously we have a linkage, so that's exactly the result we want here. Now, this one basically allows us to solve for b bar phi, and I will come back to that in a minute, but this application of Ampere's law is completely blind with respect to Bz. So the fact that Bz does not appear in this uh, uh, implementation of the theorem doesn't mean that it's zero, it just means that it cancels out because of the dark product. So we have absolutely no knowledge whatsoever about Bz at this point in time. So how do we acquire knowledge about that? Well, we can perform the circulation over a more exotic line, gamma Z, which is this line here, of B, which in this case, the only component of interest, of course, is Bz, which is directed as Uz. And this, we need to dot it Uz dz. But obviously, this integral has to be taken in a sort of limit, because gamma Z is an infinite line, so we can rewrite it as the limit for Z that goes to plus infinite of Bz. But Bz is a constant, okay, because the translation symmetry still applies. So we can take bz outside the sign of integral, and then we are left with the integral of bz, which eventually will give us uh, uh, an infinite quantity. So here we are integrating from some quantity z um, to z from minus z alt to plus z alt, if you want to use them indices to be precise, it doesn't really matter. And so this quantity has to be equal to the mu naught times the current linked to this object. How much is that current? Well, there is clearly no linkage, so this is equal to zero. So this is true if and only if bz is equal to zero. And so this allows us to find, finally, the final result for uh, b. So we know that the overall magnetostatic field everywhere in space is given by, from this equation here, there is only a bar pi component, so it has to be equal to mu naught i over 2 pi r. And this is directed only as u or pi. So I remind you that in the case of the electrostatic field, the result for the electrostatic field was as follows, e, and you can see the resemblance of these two results. But of course, in the case of the electrostatic field, we only had lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r. So you see mu naught is always in the denominator in the case of b, and in the denominator we have epsilon naught in the case of e. The 2 pi r dependence is the same, but in this case it's only directed along the radial component. So b in this case is only tangential because it has to be solenoidal, so closed field, field lines. Here it was a sink or a source, so the field lines can go into the charge distribution and they go to zero. I mean, when you approach the, the, the divergence approaching the line, it still is 1 over r pi, but of course it goes to zero when you go to infinite. And so to recap this problem, by means of almost the same symmetry argument as in the electrostatic case, but with the, the anti-rotation symmetry, we were able to show that the uh, BR component has to be equal to zero, and B bar pi and BZ can both exist, but they have to be the same on any cylinder which has Z as an axis. By using that, in particular this line gamma bar pi, we can use uh, Ampere's law, which uh, allows us to find the phi component. For the busy component, which still we, have, we know nothing about it, we need to use the circulation along this uh, more um, uh, unorthodox line, which is gamma z, and so this exotic line if you want. And so in this limiting case, we need to give it zero, which means bz has to be equal to zero. And so this allows us to find the final solution for the B field. That's it.